Hello and welcome to day 30 of our Lent 103 series. Today's topic is stubbornness. So stubbornness is the determination not to change one's attitude or position on something, especially in spite of good arguments or reasons to do so. And I want to apply stubbornness in two situations. The first being stubbornness in the sense of refusing to do something, usually because you just don't want to. And I'll use Exodus, specifically the story of Moses and the Israelites, to highlight this. So... Just to give you a really quick overview, the Israelites were God's people and they were in slavery. The Egyptians had them in slavery. And God's plan was to use Moses to liberate his people. But there was one thing that consistently stood in the way of that plan, and that was Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. He continuously and consistently stood in their way. And we see from the story that Pharaoh was a very, very, very stubborn man. We see that despite Moses repeatedly asking, he still refused to let the Israelites go. God actually describes Pharaoh as having a hardened heart. He was so stubborn that God had to inflict 10 plagues so that God could show Pharaoh that I am God and you are going to release my people, like now. Um, And the 10 plagues was literally just a series of things that God inflicted on the Egyptians, all as a ploy or as a way to get him to, again, show Pharaoh that God is God and to get Pharaoh to release his people. I'm going to quickly read Exodus chapter 7, verses 3 to 5. And it says, But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that I may lay my my hand upon Egypt and bring forth mine enemies and my people, the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. So that literally just covers what I've just said about God used the 10 plagues to show the Egyptians that he is God. And it was literally a way for God to, you know, I'm going to pluck out my people. I am going to take my people from underneath you. I'm going to liberate my people through Moses. But one thing for me was, despite the water turning into blood, despite the locusts, the frogs, the boils, the darkness for three days, and even the death, even despite the death of the firstborn sons, Pharaoh did not budge. And that really speaks volumes to just how stubborn he was and just how much he refused to, to give in and to just li- obey, obey God's word. Personally, for me, the last plague, which was the death of the firstborn sons, highlighted the reality that we stand to lose so much if we allow stubbornness to take control or to run our lives. Pharaoh's stubbornness and refusal to be disobedient cost him his child. And even still, for me, I didn't see... It kind of, I felt like it almost made him worse. Like, at what point do you think... Okay, my stubborn, it's it's reached a point now where my stubbornness has cost me my child, and yet at no point do you think, oh, you know, maybe it's time for me to sit back, to sit back, or maybe it's time for me to be obedient. But it kind of, it's like it added fire to the fuel, fuel to the fire. But anyway, we can see the detriments of stubbornness in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 1. And it says, he that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. And 2 Kings 17 verse 14 says, notwithstanding, they would not hear but harden their necks like the neck of their fathers that did not believe in the Lord their God. And I really think this ties into what I was saying earlier about just how stubborn people can be and how that stubbornness influences the way we behave I mean the word stubbornness itself is okay you've told me to do something and I'm not going to do it just because I don't want to 
And as Christians, sometimes that's actually not good enough. Earlier, I did say that I wanted to look at stubbornness in two ways. One thing I do want us to consider is how disobedient behaviour within the church and as followers of God can also be classed as stubbornness. We know that God has commanded us to live a certain way and we know that those commandments are well within reason and for our own good. We serve a God, a God that is just and has our best interests at heart, yet we still choose to disobey and do what we want. Surely, this, this has to be a form of stubbornness. And with that in mind, I really want us to take today to reflect on how stubbornness can really alter and affect what God has for us and how much of an unattractive trait stubbornness can be. Sometimes stubbornness, like I was saying earlier, unsparks unnecessary behaviour. And it's just this culture of, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm just going to do X, Y, Z because I want to. And I have no valid reason for it, but I'm just, I'm just going to be difficult. And that's essentially what it is. I remember that one thing my dad has said to me is that I should have a reason, a valid reason, for every single choice and every single decision that I make. And I want to use that here in this context. I want to ask you today... What is your reason for being stubborn? And what is your reason for disobeying God? In this case, there is none. And if we are unable to rationally justify our behaviour, we need to look at and evaluate the choices that we make. I'm going to leave you with 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verses 7 to 8. And it says, And be not to ye like your fathers and like your brethren which trespassed against the Lord God of our fathers, who therefore gave them up to desolation, as ye see. Now, be ye not stiff-necked, as your fathers were, but yield yourselves unto the Lord, and enter unto his sanctuary, which he hath sanctified for ever, and serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. So, let us be encouraged, let us not be like our brethren, stiff-necked, trespassing against God. And I pray that something in this sermon um, will have sparked something in you. I pray that as we're on day 30 of our Lenten journey, as we're reflecting on stubbornness, I pray that there's something in here that that will encourage you on this journey and that will, will remind you to turn away from stubbornness and to really remember that stubbornness in some way shape or form is a form of disobedience so let us cling to the word let us cling to our faith um, and let us not be disheartened i pray that you be encouraged and i pray that god will bless you and strengthen you on this lenten journey amen thank you for tuning in to day 30 of our lent 103 series be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms at Morning Star London, where we'll be uploading daily content to support you on your Lenten journey. Thank you and God bless.